Good day everyone. Today we will tackle Julian Jane study, which is the origin of consciousness and the breakdown of the bicameral mind and his perception in religion. <laughs> I am Evelyn Francisco and I am one of the reporters today. Julian James was an American researcher at Yale and Princeton for nearly 25 years. He was born on February 27, 1920 in West Newton, Massachusetts, United States. He was died on November 17, 1997 at the age of 77 at Charlottetown, Prince Edward, Canada. In the beginning of the book, James asked, The consciousness that is set that is myself of souls, that is everything and yet nothing at all. What is it and where did it come from and why? And sinagot din naman ni Yoni Jane sa pamamagitan ng paglalahad ng isang, sa paglalahad ng isang versyon ng kasaysayan na kung saan ang mga tao ay hindi paganap na may kamalayan. Hanggang sa tatlong libong taon na ang nakalilipas, sa halip ay umaasa pa rin sa dalawang bahagi or the bicameral mind na ang kalahati ay nagsasabi, nagsa, nagsasabi or nagsasalita sa pamamagitan ng tinig ng Diyos na may patnubay sa tuwing may mahirap na sitwasyon. The Origin of Consciousness and the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind It was published on 1976. A tell story of how mankind learned to think critics describe is a bizarre or kakaiba and reckless masterpiece. The book addresses problematic nature of consciousness, the ability to introspect, which Jane's view must be distinguished from the sensory awareness and other process of cognition, his proposed solution. Consciousness is a learned behavior. In turn, point, in turn points the origin of consciousness in ancient human history rather than metaphysical or evolutionary processes. The bicameral mind characterized not by anything like the consciousness we was experienced today, but was divided into two parts. First, the subsequent and non-conscious man who operated like organic automaton. Second, the gods that man hallucinated who guided him through the world. To support such as extraordinary claim, James gathers a wealth of evidence by studying literature, archaeology, history, and the possible echoes of the bicameralism in the psychology and neurology. The work was broken into three books. First, The Mind of Man. It explores issues of modern understandings of consciousness in order to introduce the concepts of the cameral mind, followed by the neurological evidence to support the possibility of, his, of this ancient and alien form of mind. Second, the witness of history. It explores archaeological historical evidence to support Jane's claim of the nature and organizational power of the bicameral mind. He also consults ancient literature like the Iliad and the Iliad and the Odysseys and even the Old Testament. In his first book, his radical understanding of the bicameral mind was emerged. He holds that the bicameral mind was organized around twin language centers in the brain. The right hemisphere of the brain is to is responsible to speak. Ito yung nagsasabi or nagko-command into our left brain kung ano ba yung dapat gagawin or ano yung gagawin. While the left hemisphere of the brain is to listen and obey. Kung ano yung sasabihin ng right brain or the right hemisphere of the brain ay susundin ng left hemisphere of the brain. For example, may nagbulong sa akin or yung God na may nagbulong sa akin na um, gawin ko or halimbawa, apakan ko yung bagay na yon or apakan ko yung pako na nakausli. Without thinking or walang pag-aalinlangan, hindi ko napag-iisipan kung tama ba yon or hindi, ay gagawin ko yon dahil ngayon yung sinabi sa akin or yun yung, yung binulong sa akin. Next, James asserts the second unused language center exists because the language of man was involved with only one hemisphere in order to live 
the other free for the language of the gods. He believes that this use of language means not only the consciousness came after language, but, o- but so did the bicameral mind. In his examination of functionality of the left and right side of the brain, James asserts that the two hemisphere can operate independently as, as if they were almost different people. In the bicameral mind, the right side organized experience and utilizing the language center of the right hemisphere issued order to the left side of the brain form of the hallucinated language that was recognized as a god. When we say hallucination, yun yung may nagsasabi sa'yo and then hindi mo nakokontrol yung sarili, sarili mo or hindi mo alam kung ano yung ginagawa mo basta pinapakinggan mo lang yung god na nagbubulong sa'yo na gawin mo yung bagay na yun. These hallucinations were not experienced as modern subjective consciousness understand hallucinations. Jane states that the three was no I or subjective consequence to experience the hallucination. Jane supposes this relation between the left and right side of the brain was effective enough to move ancient human from hunter-gatherer, hunter-gatherer groups to simple societies. All the way up the scales of complexity to the ancient Mesopotamian, Asian, and American civilizations. The most important aspect of the second book is the exploration of how the bicameral mind was not perfect. As civilization became increasingly complex and a series of natural disaster rocked the ancient Mediterranean world, Jane supposed that the bicameral mind broke down. How? Jane hold that the adaptation that lead the bicameral mind that of language was also the first factor to weaken it. As language evolved in complexity and began to take on written form, it exerted a social control that made the hallucinated voices of the god less necessary. This exacerbated the decline of hallucination as subjected consciousness is on written form, it exerted a social control that made the hallucinated voices of the god less necessary. This exacerbated the decline of hallucination as subjected consciousness slowly began to emerge as a more effective way of coping with the confusion in the world at time. The subjective consciousness did not simply appear as a full-blown mind state, but gradually emerged as human being began to construct metaphorical understanding of the differences between others. The understanding developed that if others were different from each another, held different beliefs and opinions, then maybe there was something inside them that made them different. As Jane state, the tradition and philosophy that praises the problem as the logic of inferring other mind from one's own has it the wrong way around. We may first unconsciously suppose other consciousness and then infer our own by generalization. Jane's examine literature, philosophy, and history in order to bear out the slowly emergence of consciousness from the ruins of the culture of the bicameral mind. He finds some evidence for the emergence of consciousness and shifting usage of words in the ancient epics. Moving from simple description of the world, the metaphorical application of of internal spaces associated with feeling and eventually thought, and the rest of book 2 explores the different way the ancient world changed at conscious supplanted the bicameral mind as the dominant organization of humanity. In the third book, explores the lasting impressions of the bicameral mind left into the modern world. He argues that subjective consciousness still seems to be developing. 
Schizophrenia is the throwback to the bicameral mind, misunderstood in our modern world to be an aberration rather than an alternative organization of the human mind. The ubiquitous presence of the religion is also reminiscent of the power of hallucinatory gods as central to civilization, like the like that of the left side of the brain in relation to the right side of the brain may also be a evidence of the ancient bicameral mind. The origin of consciousness is a sweeping and revolutionary work that shall that challenges both ancient and modern solutions to the questions of the origin of consciousness, but it leaves must to be explored. A great deal more research needs to be done in order to corroborate Jane's positions, as the neurological basis of the bicameral mind is suggestive, but far from proven. Also, while Jane's examination of the historical evidence for the emergence of the bicameral mind and then that con and then that of consciousness in terms of the study of literature archaeology and religion is an impressive scope he deals by and large with the precursors with to western and middle of the eastern culture he spent time speculating about the interactions of the old civilization with the congestors. But does not detail the evolution of consciousness afterward in the same way. He explores the evolution of Mediterranean consciousness. As for the Asian civilization, he briefly alludes to Japan and Vedic religions, but used not present evidence of the bicameral mind in Asia. Still, the origin of consciousness is a powerful work that reveals the range of the of possibilities still open in exploration of consciousness, even as it seeks to provide the solution of a problem. Okay.